This video is sponsored by Brilliant. More about them at the end. If you have ever done any amount of GPU shader programming, you might have heard that if statements in shaders should be avoided. This is sometimes done even at the cost of additional computation. So why is this? And why isn't this strictly done on the CPU side of programming, where we use if statements pretty much everywhere? Before we understand this, let's see what a GPU is meant to be for by looking at the traditional graphics pipeline. Here's what it looks like, but the biggest two parts of this to know are these two. The vertex shader and the fragment shader are two types of programs that get run on the GPU. There are more types, of course, but these two are enough to make the point. In graphics, whenever rendering anything, we depict models in terms of triangles, since a combination of a large number of triangles can form even the most complex models, like the Stanford Dragon test model, consisting of over a million triangles. The vertex shader is a program that gets run for every single vertex of every single triangle in the model, that is, for this model, over 3 million times. Similarly, the fragment shader is a program that is run for every single pixel where the model is going to be rendered. So, if your model is covering the entire screen and you have a 1920 by 1080 HD screen for that model alone, the fragment shader will be run over 2 million times. Now these are ludicrous numbers, and even though CPUs are fast, they are not fast enough for millions of invocations for just one frame, and it is a target of 60 FPS. Along with that, if you're making a game, you would have to execute this logic along with the game logic, which could include so much more. This is where GPUs come in. GPUs are hard optimized for highly parallelizable tasks like this one. I say parallelizable because every single invocation of the shader code can be done in parallel and there are no dependencies between any two such invocations. The only thing the CPU has to do is prepare the vertex data and shader code, send it all to the GPU and then execute a draw call which tells the GPU to do all the work. Now that we've seen what GPUs have to optimize for, that is parallelizable tasks, Let's see how that is done exactly. The major thing done is just adding a bunch of cores. That is the individual parts of a processor that are capable of running code independently. While CPUs have say 2, 4, 8, maybe 16 cores, GPUs have hundreds if not thousands of them. The latest RTX 4090 cards have 16,384 cores, which is a lot. Now. Even if every one core is dedicated to processing one single fragment or vertex, it would still be an improvement over doing everything one at a time on the CPU. But there is another big thing that is done. Looking closer at the problem, there is one fundamental assumption we can make. That is, the code to be run for a certain vertex or fragment is going to be the same for all of them. Remember, the same vertex shader code is to be run for all vertices in one batch or model. That is, whatever is sent to be rendered for that one draw call. And the same fragment shader code will be run for all active fragments for that draw call. This presents an opportunity for optimization through one technique used commonly in high-performance CPU side applications, and that is SIMD. Here's a quick explanation on SIMD. SIMD stands for Single Instruction Multiple Data and is a way to run the same code on different data quickly. For example, say we want to do a 4D integer vector addition. Normally, you would have to do things one at a time. Load X components of both the vectors into two registers, do the sum operation, and then show the output back. Then do the same for Y, Z, and W. However, with SIMD, it becomes far easier. There, there are special registers on the CPU which are a lot wider than normal ones. For example, 128 bits. With this, we can load entire vectors into two such registers, then execute one singular SIMD instruction like add epi 32 to add the four numbers at once. Then the output can be stored wherever you want, in one go. 
This is clearly far faster than doing addition one at a time. And this same idea can be used in GPUs. Now, to be clear, modern GPUs don't just use SIMD. Instead, they use a technique called SIMT, single instruction, multiple threads, which is slightly better in some ways. But in the end, conceptually, I think it's easier to think about this problem in the SIMD terms. And these are actually quite interchangeable most of the time. The terminology between these two is not the same though. One of these columns, which is called a SIMD lane in SIMD terminology, is analogous to a thread in SIMT tech terminology. The set of threads on which a single instruction is working on is referred to as a warp or a wave or a wavefront. So the hierarchy looks like this. A single GPU has multiple cores, each of which can have multiple wavefronts, and each of those can have multiple threads. Each thread or SIMG lane is capable of working on a single unit like a vertex or fragment, but each wavefront or SIMD register set is what the shader code is getting executed on. Now maybe some of you have got the answer as to why if statements can make shaders slow. Imagine a shader like this, which has to be run for all vertices. If all the code in the if statement has to be run for some vertices, but not others, it will definitely cause a problem for the GPU. Remember, an entire wavefront is supposed to execute the same code. If some vertices are jumping to some instruction, but others aren't, that would cause problems. This is called thread divergence and is the devil. And in these cases, SIMT allows the CPU to effectively stop some threads from executing instructions. This is normally done through some sort of masking to run code for specific SIMD lanes. But that just means that some threads have to wait around for other threads to finish their work, which is not ideal. So that's it, right? I should just go ahead and remove all if statements from my shaders because they are going to cause irreversible damage to my performance. But no, before you do that, there are some big things to know. Not all if statements are made equal. Generally, there are three different kinds of if statements or conditional branching statements depending upon the nature of the condition inside them, which cause different amounts of GPU time. The first is a compile time static if statement. In this, the if condition is resolvable at compile time, either due to it being just a constant or a preprocessor definition. In this case, the shader compiler itself can optimize branches out, so divergence is prevented. You don't need to touch these at all. The second is a purely dynamic if, where the condition is based on data received per vertex or fragment. These ifs are the worst and are the ones that cause the thread divergence and slow shaders down. So reducing these is a good idea. But the third one is more interesting in my opinion. The third if statement is based on uniforms or push constants. If you don't know what these are, they're pretty simple. Uniforms or push constants are set right before issuing the draw call which is, as said before, the CPU telling the GPU to start working on the data. But the main thing is that they're constant for that specific draw call. They can't be changed in between the execution of that draw call. This means that the GPU can do some optimization per draw call. Honestly, information on what the GPU is actually doing here is scarce and on doing a lot of googling I saw every single source had entirely different explanations on what could happen. So at this point I'm not sure what happened exactly on what to believe. If anyone has any idea what's true please leave a comment down below. One final thing to note. Shader compilers do optimize away branches whenever possible but it is always good to know how that is done. You can't always optimize away all if statements, but ones like this, where you're assigning a variable to different values based on a condition, can be easily removed. To do this, remember that a boolean is really just a number, 0 for false and 1 for true. And using the identities 1 times k is k 
and 0 times k is 0, we can come up with this formula. The idea is using condition and 1 minus condition as coefficients for a and b, meaning that either condition is 1 and 1 minus condition is 0, or vice versa. We are effectively enabling and disabling a and b using the identities. Another thing that is good to know is maths. You need it all the time when programming, and the best way to learn that, along with computer science and data science interactively, is Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. You can take their courses at your leisure, and they cover a vast array of topics for all skill levels, like algorithms and data structures, neural networks and machine learning, and even the basics, like thinking in code. New lessons are also added every month, which is great. I personally have been really enjoying the quantum computing course recently, since that's a topic I've never really looked into before. If that interests you, you can get started for free today for the first 30 days by going to brilliant.org slash The first 200 people who click the link in the description get 20% off on Brilliant's annual subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. But that's all for today. See you next time.